Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Kimball International stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Kimball is the successor to WW Kimball and Company the world's largest piano and organ manufacturer in the 19th and 20th centuries. The company also has a hospitality division, which has furnished over 14,000 rooms in Las Vegas hotels and casinos. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 466 million market cap. They're trading at 1267 a share and they have 37 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flows, cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So the company has positive free cash flow each year. It's up and down, but it looks okay. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. Then net income grows from 34 million to 41 million. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that has increased overall from 686 million to 767 million. Their net profit margins are kind of low, five to six percent a year. Net profit margin is net income over revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. They converted five percent of their revenue into profit in a trailing 12 months, which means 95 percent went towards expenses. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The difference between revenue and cost of revenue is the gross profit. And that was the highest in a trailing 12 months. It's interesting to see how well this company is doing during the global pandemic. Below gross profit is their operating expenses. And below that is their operating income. Operating income is how much income the company generates from its core operational business. This is a good number to focus on when you value a company. The stuff below operating income is important, but it's not part of your day-to-day -day operations. Below operating income is the interest they pay in their debt and other income and expenses, which is outside of the company's core operations. You want to see a company that can generate a healthy income from its everyday business. On the bottom there's taxes and below that is net income. So the company has fairly consistent net income each year and it seems to be growing a little bit. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. This is how much cash the company generated from its everyday operational business. Then you have capital expenditures which are investments in property, plant and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. This is how much money is left over for the company to invest back into the business, to pay a dividend, to pay down debt, or to buy back stock. And the company doesn't issue any debt to run their business. They have paid down a little debt over the years, but they are buying back stock. 12 million, 11 million, 4.4 million, and 3 million. They do pay a dividend, but this is another way to reward investors is to buy back stock, which artificially increases the stock price. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If a company can't generate positive and consistent operating cash flow, it does not have much of a business. This company does generate sufficient operating cash flow each year. And to calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, and then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. They pass through a $16.8 million depreciation expense. They also pass through a positive 2.9 million of deferred taxes, so we have to subtract that out in a cash flow from operations section. They also pass through 5.7 million of stock-based compensation, and they had negative 11 million dollars in changes in working capital. This is changes in accounts payable, accounts receivable, inventory, things like that. Let's look at a capital structure. They have 245 million dollars of equity, 22 million dollars of debt. So they're 92% equity, 8% debt. They have negative 75 million of net debt. That means they could pay off all their debt with the cash in their balance sheet and still have $75 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 8.6% and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for. 
that's 598 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $538 million. We divide that by 37 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 1462. They're trading at 1267, so they're trading at a 13% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street's valuation is 974, so they're saying the stock is overvalued. They're saying it's a sell. The stock was climbing for a few years, then dropped a lot in March, and it hasn't come up too much since then, so it's trading at a major discount relative to its all-time high. It looks like the stock was trading around $22, maybe $23 at its peak. The company raises its dividend a little each year. The current dividend yield is 2.8% and their payout ratio is 32% and they pay out 43% of their free cash flow. They have a pretty low beta, 0.87, so the stock moves less than the market. It's not volatile. The stock has gone down 39% in the past 52 weeks, much worse than the S&P 500. And the low was $8, the high was $22. The stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average, so it seems to be in an uptrend. There's not much action on this stock, only about 300,000 shares are traded each day. And of the 37 million shares outstanding, 33 million are on float, 67% are held by institutions, and 1.3% of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $27,700 today. If you did not reinvest the dividends, you'd have $26,600. If you invested $10,000 in this company in January 2011, you would have been down to about $9,000 after a few months. And hopefully you did not sell because if you held long enough, your $10,000 would have been worth $45,000. But if you're still holding, it's worth $27,700, which is not a bad return on investment. BlackRock is the biggest shareholder at 7.7%, then Renaissance, Dimensional Fund, Vanguard, and Geode. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE is 11.9, the median is 14.8, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 11.2. So investors are paying $11.20 for $1 of earnings. That's better than the median and average. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They have a really good price to sales ratio of 0.6. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.9, also better than the median and average. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. And that's 245 million. Their tangible equity is 220 million because they have 25 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. ROE is net income over equity. They're 17%, so they have a good ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 2.1, so they can cover their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are 97 million of cash, 68 million of receivables, and 50 million of inventory. And the company does seem to be well capitalized. They had $31 million of free cash flow. They have $123 million of working capital. And they only have a $13 million dividend payment. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 13% discount. This is a really small company in terms of market cap. But they've been around a really long time. They make really beautiful and unique products. Plus, the most important thing is they're still generating positive free cash flow and positive net income and their revenue is improving. The unfortunate part is not that many people know about this company, so less people buy the stock. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.